Autopoesis is an artificial life robotic sculpture series commissioned by the Chiasma Museum in Helsinki, Finland. It consists of 15 musical and robotic sculptures that interact with the public and modify their behaviors based on both the presence of the participants in the exhibition and the communication between each separate sculpture. This series of robotic sculptures talk with each other through a hardwired network and audible telephone tones, which are a musical language for the group. The interactivity engages the viewer participant, who in turn affects the system's evolution and emergence. This creates a system evolution as well as an overall group sculptural aesthetic. Autopoesis utilizes a number of unique approaches to create this complex and evolving environment. It uses smart sensor organization that senses the presence of the viewer participant and allows the robotic sculpture to respond intelligently. By organizing the sensors in this way, I have minimized the number of sensors while maximizing the ability of the software to cope with this data. For example, at the top of each sculptural element or arm, four passive infrared sensors face south, north, east, and west. When two sensors are triggered, the program knows that someone is located in, for instance, the southeast corner, and this is the direction the sculpture moves to. Four sensors allow eight quadrants of sensing. These passive infrared sensors tell each arm to move in the direction of the viewer, while the active infrared sensor located at the tip stops the arm as it arrives within inches of the viewer. This allows the sculpture to display both attraction and repulsion behaviors. Furthermore, in autopoiesis, the robotic sensors compare their sensor data through a central state controller, so the viewer is able to walk through the sculptural installation and have the arms interact both individually and as a group. Because each arm has its own onboard computer control, the overall speed of reaction is rapid and therefore lifelike. Local control always supersedes group control when a local sensor is aware of a human nearby. At the tip of two of the arms, lipstick cameras project what they see onto the walls of the space. This gives the viewer participant a sense of being observed by this artificial life robotic sculpture. The sculptures also communicate using bit strings as information, and they exchange this data serially, interconnecting all sculptures. Each sculpture also generates bit strings of information as algorithms, which affect the overall group behaviors. When, for instance, there are large crowds of people in the installation, the group behaviors tend to be far less vigorous. When there's fewer people and each arm is getting less data, then the overall group behavior is far more vigorous. Additionally, the tones are a musical language that allows individual robotic sculptures to communicate and give the viewer a sense of the emotional state of the sculptural elements as they interact. Higher and more rapid tones are associated with fear and the lower, more deliberate tonal sequences with relaxation and play. Other tones give the impression of the sculptures whistling to themselves. The telephone tones are a consistent language of intercommunication and manifest a sense of overall group robot consciousness, where what is said by one affects what is said by others. Autopoiesis continually evolves its own behaviors in response to the unique environment and viewer participant inputs. This group consciousness of sculptural robots manifests a cybernetic ballet of experience with the computer machine and viewer participant involved in a grand dance of one sensing and responding to the other. 
Augmented Fish Reality is an interactive installation of five rolling robotic fishbowl sculptures designed to explore interspecies and transspecies communication. These sculptures allow the Siamese fighting fish to use intelligent hardware and software to move their robotic bowls under their control. As with many fish, Siamese fighting fish have eyes which allow them to see for great distances outside the water. Fish have the ability to mentally map their environments in finding food and avoiding predators. This design uses four infrared sensors around each bowl which allow the fish to move forward and back and turn the bowls. By swimming to the edge of the bowl, the fish activate motorized wheels that move the robots in that direction. Humans interact with the work simply by entering the environment. These bowls consist of a living environment of peace lilies which help to absorb the waste stream from the fish. The bowls and robots are designed to allow the fish to get within one quarter inch of each other for visual communication between the fish, both male and female. Small lipstick video cameras mounted on 45 degree angles under two of the bowls image the interior of the fish bowls as well as humans in this environment and these images are intercepted with video transceivers and projected back to the walls of the installation and give human participants a sense of both looking into the interior of the tanks and feeling I think the project really came to an exciting fruition when I saw this very exciting paper by a doctor of entomology, Dr. Guy Thériuz, and he said basically that ants were uh, rule-driven systems. And I realized at that moment that, well, if that's the case, knowing that computers are in fact rule-driven systems, could you create a series of autonomous robots that would be able to act like ants? So in essence, what you have is you have a series of robots that roughly look like spiders, that seek out their food like ants, but that see like bats. Uh, as with spiders, they have multiple eyes. In this case, these spiders uh, have infrared eyes that are sending out a pulse of infrared light and looking for a frequency back. If you actually look at the robots, you'll see at the front of the robots, there's a couple of springs right here. And uh, as with a spider, the chelicerae of the spider brings the food into the mouth of the spider. Well, these are the chelicerae of the robot. And what happens is when the robot approaches a recharge station, it then connects between these two rails and then charges the battery up. They all talk with each other with Bluetooth, the communications technology. Uh, one of them can find a food source, for example, and it can then sing its food source back to the others. Uh, with this Bluetooth communications and then tell them where that food source is. There's a whole evolution happening within the realm of computing and technology which is very much about somehow giving back emotional feedback to humans because of course as humans we communicate with body languages and emotional responses and so on. For example, when you approach these robots and they see you, they twitter to, to you and they give you an emotional response and you know instantly that they see you because they look right at you with these ultrasonic um, sensors that in fact look like eyes. I'm really fascinated by living systems and by the models that living systems provide to the technological world. Um, I believe that there's an evolved wisdom to those models that, you know, we, what they say maybe close to four billion years now life has been evolving. That's a very long time, but of course with technological systems they're moving so intense and so rapidly. You know, in essence we were actually able to evolve something through the use of visualization technology, 3D modeling, uh, rapid prototyping to output what it was we thought we were seeing virtually and do they work physically given the materials, we were able to evolve the morphology literally in a matter of a couple of months. Of course there are concerns with that as well because in a, in a, a biological world everything is symbiotically intertwined in our technological world things don't get to intertwine as much. So a lot of my work is about uh, trying to find a kind of gentle um, connection between the organic and the biological and seeing if in fact we can 
in considering those lessons that the biological offers us if we can in fact allow um, you know the technological systems and the biological to to be better coupled to be symbiotically intertwined to some extent Paparazzi bots are a series of five autonomous robots, each standing at the height of the average human. Comprised of multiple cameras, sensors, and robotic actuators on a custom-built rolling platform, they move at the speed of a walking human, avoiding walls and obstacles, while using infrared sensors to move toward humans. They have ultrasonic sensors, allowing them to see out to a distance of 13 feet in order to move toward passing subjects. The paparazzi robots seek one thing, which is to capture photos of people and to make these images available to the press and the World Wide Web as a statement of culture's obsession with the celebrity image and especially our own images. Each autonomous robot makes the decision to take the photos of particular people while ignoring other humans in the exhibition, based on such things as whether or not the viewers are smiling or the shape of their smile. The enteric consciousness is a large robotic tongue controlled by an artificial stomach. This artificial stomach is filled with the same living bacteria, Lactobacillus acidophilus, that occupy our own natural stomachs. Our stomachs and intestinal systems are called the enteric nervous system and are certainly seen as forms of intelligence as they possess one thousandth of the numbers of neurons in the human brain and use many of the same neurotransmitters such as dopamine, serotonin, and epinephrine. If the hand and finger can be seen as extensions of our human brain, then the tongue can be thought of as an extension of the enteric nervous system seeking out what it prefers to ingest. In this installation, an artificial stomach will allow the bacteria within it to activate a functioning robotic chair in the shape of a giant tongue. This giant tongue is designed to give you a comforting massage. The robotic chair is covered with a red emu leather that gives the appearance of swollen taste buds of an enlarged and hungry tongue. I have chosen in this work to focus on our sense of touch and corporeal experience as a way to explore interactivity, as our largest sense organ is in fact our skin. As peristaltic muscle movements propel food and bacteria through our natural stomachs, so an electronic peristalt pump will artificially replicate these movements as it moves cooling water through the artificial glass stomach. A pH meter will constantly measure the acidity and basicity of the bacteria, and these signals are interfaced to and activate a series of relays and microcontrollers that allow the robotic tongue chair to activate, relax, and massage the viewer interactant. Acid-loving milk bacterium, Lactobacillus acidophilus, are the activators of this robotic tongue. Another important element of this installation are two smaller robotic tongues that dip into and out of chocolate pools located in large glass containers. The containers are held up by large dopamine molecules constructed in steel. The dopamine molecule is believed to mediate the subjective experience of pleasure in humans and other animals. Sugar and fat are two substances that both the tongue and the stomach desire. Research has proven that chocolate can boost serotonin and it can also stimulate secretions of endorphins. This work is mostly inspired by the notion of the conscious stomach, though it is also inspired by the ideas that humans are not individuals so much as clouds of intertwined human, bacterial, and now machine cells. We have evolved into hybrid symbiotic ecosystems that consist of trillions of living bacteria, Fusiform Polyphony is a series of six interactive robotic sculptures that compose their own music with input from participant facial images. Micro video cameras mounted on the ends of these robots move toward people's body heat and faces while capturing human snapshots. These images are digitally processed, pixelated, and produce constantly evolving generative soundscapes where facial features and interaction are turned into sound, melody, tone, and rhythm. <laughs> 
These elements fused manifest the viewer as participant, actor, and conductor in defining new ways of interacting with robots and allow the robots to safely interact with humans in complex and natural environments. An important element of this installation is to see self through the robot's artificial eyes, as each robot tracks and captures images in the process of showing the nature of algorithmic robotic vision. These works are covered in human hair and explore new morphologies of soft robotics and emerging field where natural materials make the works approachable and friendly. The hair serves to point to a human-robotic hybrid moment in our own evolution, where the intelligence of robots is more fully fusing with our own. The live camera-based video of the robots is processed through Max MSP and Jitter and projected to the periphery of the installation on five screens. When the robot is at head height, a sensor at the tip of the robot is triggered and a facial snapshot is taken. The snapshot is held in the small area of the projected screen to the upper right. That snapshot is broken down into 300 pixel grid and variations of red, green and blue data of each pixel is extracted and interfaced to Max MSP and Jitter and to Ableton Live which selects the musical sample determining rhythm, tempo and dynamics. Changing pixel data constantly changes Ableton virtual instrument selection sets with random seeds coming from the snapshots. The robotic structures were created with 3D modeled cast urethane plastics, monofilament, and a carbon fiber rod and laser cut aluminum elements supporting the computer's microprocessor and motor drive systems. These robots structure, inform, enhance, and magnify people's behavior and interactions as they auto-generate a unique and a constantly evolving generative soundscape. They take the unique multicultural makeup of each person and create facial songs, where those songs joining with six other robotic human soundscapes creates an overall human polyphonic and video experience.